Well, good evening. Nice to see you. Uh, just about to see you in the candlelight uh, there. And a welcome, particularly a welcome if you don't visit us regularly. It's nice to see you. Uh, and also to those people who are joining us online for the service. Understandably, I imagine there's a number of people uh, who in the current circumstances have decided uh, it might be safer to be at home. Uh, but welcome wherever you are, whether you're here or at home, uh, we give you a warm welcome. My name's uh, Richard Beals. I'm one of the leaders here. Uh, normally, Phil, our minister, uh, would be taking this part of it. Uh, but guess what? He's got COVID out there, so uh, he can't be, uh, he may well be online. So. Phil, we hope you're doing well, uh, and the family. Uh, we'll, hopefully you'll be back with us very soon. So for those of you in the church, can I just remind you uh, that a decree has gone forth, uh, as it does at Christmas time, uh, this time from Boris Johnson, about face coverings. So please wear your face coverings, and tempting though it might be to slip them down while singing carols, uh, that's just reserved for the people at the front uh, there. So please just keep your face coverings on uh, throughout the service, unless you're exempt. Just a notice uh, there, so we've just got one. Uh, Christmas provides an opportunity uh, for us to give presents and gifts to other people. Uh, and as a church, we have a special uh, opportunity at Christmas uh, for an offering. Uh, and what happens is that we give that to two organisations, one local organisation. Uh, and so the local organisation that we're giving to this year is Sutton Refugee and Migrant Network. And the overseas project is to support a Christian church in one of the poorest countries in the world, in Chad. Uh, and we've got two missionaries linked uh, to that uh, hospital out there. If you want to give, uh, then you can give by either cheque or bank transfer. Or at the end of the evening, uh, we've got the church card reader. All modern technology uh, is available uh, there. Uh, so if you want to give, then that will be your opportunity uh, to do so. So during this evening's uh, service, the candle, carols by candlelight, uh, there, we'll be able to sing some familiar carols, we'll be able to listen to Bible and other readings uh, there, and also watch a media clip. Uh, but this year, partly as Phil uh, isn't around to do the sermon or talk out uh, there, we won't be having a talk. But it gives us an opportunity really to maybe think more about the, the songs that we sing, uh, but also the readings. So as you sing and listen and watch, uh, please just take that and uh, see what uh, God is saying to you as we reflect on that first Christmas, uh, but also as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Uh, so just so that you know, there won't be any introductions between the various elements. Uh, so you have to keep on your toes or on your feet uh, when you see a, a line of, the, uh, of a carol come up on the screen. Uh, if you want to, please stand and join in singing. And as that carol finishes, just sit down. That will save people jumping up and down and introducing and uh, telling you when to sit and when to stand. So those are the instructions uh, there. But before we go any further, let's just pray. Dear Father God, I pray that as we reflect on that first Christmas and as we celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us, this evening we will receive not just a fresh understanding, but also a fresh experience of your love, your joy, your hope, and your peace. So, O oh come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Okay, the first reading uh, is from Isaiah, uh, chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever.
Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Uh, so the Holy One uh, to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive um, in, um, is in her sixth month, for no word of God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? The child that you delivered would soon deliver you. The blind will see the 
Micah chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Matthew chapter 1, 
verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded, had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to his son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
Let us pray. God of the waiting, give us courage to wait with those in the most broken places of the world and with all those who struggle to be bearers of hope there. We pray with those who wait for wars to stop, for violence to cease. God of the waiting, turn conflict into peace. And we pray for those who have given up on the coming of hope because they feel they wait in vain at checkpoints, borders, for jobs, for food, and for all those whose lives are crushed under the structures and systems of injustice. God of the waiting, wait with your world. Turn anger into reconciliation and our lack of hope into courage so that our waiting may be over and all the things of darkness shall be no more. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 56. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that, that the Lord will fulfil his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home.
Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available to them. Luke 2, verse 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Rough sleepers watched their dogs by night or seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down and glory shone around. That he for mighty dread had seized the troubled mind. Glad tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you in day. I've just come from meeting somebody and I've got to tell everybody Cause it's good news and it's for everybody A tent in an underpass covered with rags This is good news wrapped up in a sleeping bag All glory to be God on high and on the a favor don't just take the word of this rough sleeping stranger see for yourself come and meet the savior
Christmas Coming by Pat Bennett. This Christmas, Lord, take a corner of my life and steal in. Invade the busyness of my doing with the quiet of your coming. This Christmas, Lord, take a corner of my mind and steal in. Illuminate the darkness of my thinking with the brightness of your seeing. This Christmas, Lord, Take a corner of my heart and steal in. Infuse the coldness of my loving with the warmth of your being. This Christmas, Lord, as at Bethlehem's stable, come and steal in. Take the unprepared places of my life and make them fit for your dwelling. John chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. 
He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, well, this is what the, this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He 
he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they'd heard the king, they went on their way and the star they'd seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So as we come to the, the end of our Carols by Candlelight, my first will thank the readers uh, and also the musicians and the singers as well, but also those behind the scenes who have made this uh, happen uh, this evening. But also thanks to you for coming uh, there and thanks for watching uh, online uh, or maybe later, maybe you watch this again online out there. So unfortunately in the current climate, we're not going to be able to serve refreshments. We normally do uh, on an occasion like this, but there is a little gift for those of you who are here uh, as you leave. So just please take that as a token uh, of our gift to you uh, at this Christmas time. So thank you for coming. And uh, I've just got a couple of things. There's, a, there's some leaflets again about the remaining services uh, that we've got. So uh, we've got something on the 24th at four o'clock, uh, again at 11.30, and then on 10 o'clock on Christmas Day itself, just a short celebration out there. So you can take one of these uh, if you want. There are some at the front. Uh, and also just to let you know is that uh, Christianity and Christmas isn't just uh, for Christmas out there. So we've got a leaflet about uh, who we are and what we do. Again, uh, if you want to find out a little bit more about that, that would be fantastic. And if you want to find more about the Christian faith, uh, then do come along again or just get in contact with us or speak to us. Uh, we'd love to share more about not just what Christmas is about, 
but also about what Christ's life and death means for us uh, today, here and now. So I think uh, that's all I need to say, apart from then just closing in a prayer for us. So let's pray. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless each of you now, throughout this Christmas period, and forever. Amen. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Why things we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.